Hello. We're at the last leak of last week, excuse me, of Pro League Season 2. Uh, we're going to go over the two different matches that we happened. We're going to first look at the third place matchups. Um, so the way it kind of panned out was that uh, I decided to have it be like a 1v1 matchup where the team captains play each other, and then the first picks, and the second picks, and so on and so forth. Um, however, uh, each team was given a chance to swap a player. Uh, so the higher ranked team, uh, in this case it would have been uh, Destroy Call's team, was able to select a, or sorry, I believe it was SJ's team, I don't remember exactly, uh, was able to select all the maps, so they could select which maps they wanted to play, and then um, they would, uh, uh, both teams would submit their lineups, and then, uh, well not submit their lineups, both teams would submit their swaps if they had any, and, uh, and then they'd just play on the maps. Um, so both of these teams decided to use their swaps. Destroy Call's team uh, decided to sw swap Destroy Call with Cytocaster, so uh, the, the team captain with their third pick. Uh, and then on uh, SJ's Burb side of things, we had Steven Ayer and Mr. Pankaka be swapped. Yeah, so uh, that's essentially what happened. And uh, so it's going to be Cytocaster versus SJ on Cursed Temple, Nigat versus Yummy Blah Blah on Thieves Isle, The Fighter versus Steven Ayer on Silent Fjord, Destroy Call versus Consciously Eating on Ravaged, and Death Stroke versus Mr. Pankaka on Sylvan Charm, which was not played, by the way. And yeah, let's hop right into it. So let's take a look at uh, the replays. I think we'll go in standard order for this one, uh, just from the top down, and we'll see how it goes. So game one, Sadocaster versus It's J on Cursed Temple. Spawning. Oh, I, 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 uh, I caught this one as it was going, so. Uh, spawning in the bottom left, it's going to be Sadocaster playing for uh, Team, what's it called? The Whispering Guitar, something like that. Very long name. And in the bottom right, the team captain for It's J's Burbs. It's going to be It's J. And we'll see how it goes. Um, so one of the things about this map is that it is very small, so the rush distance is going to be really tiny. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see any of these players go for an early scout or anything like that. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, so Sadocaster has played all right in the league. I don't believe uh, Sadocaster was able to win a single match, but uh, I've definitely seen a lot of uh, improved play overall. Uh, SJ, on the other hand, has been uh, a crucial part of his team. He's been doing pretty well overall, so uh, I would definitely consider him to be the favorite. So we have a den opening. Seems like it's just going to be a one den so far. Um, I, I think it's unlikely that's going to be a 2 den versus a Rax opening. So um, I'm not really sure if I like the, the beast style opening on this map. Um, just because this main area over here is very, very small and very cramped. Um, there's not a lot of things that you can do to uh, get a surround or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I feel like this kind of tells me that uh, SJ kind of wants to f play a little bit safe or something like that. But um, because one, one den is a pretty, f uh, a fairly safe, I'd say, opening. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. So we have a raider on the way for a Sadocaster and just a single, single wolf. So it is going to be the DC build where you do go for the second house before the castle, and just scouting around and around the natural base to see if there's anything crazy, any proxies or anything like that. Uh, so no proxies are found, and uh, yeah, looks like we're going to play pretty standard so far. And we'll see how it goes. So uh, definitely the the Raider Expand is definitely favored against the One Den, in my opinion. Uh, you just do get a lot of map control. I would like to see a Flash over here to try to do some extra damage to the Wolf, but uh, not going to do that. Instead, looks like just gonna try to take a base and play a little bit defensive. Uh, so if you do go for the one, oops, you should pull that back. There you go. If you do go for the one, uh, one raider expand, then keeping it at home like he is doing is the correct play. But if you go for two or more, you definitely want to be sending this raider across the map to see what's going on. But Sadocaster opted to go for the one raider, and therefore keeping it at home is a great idea. Uh, on the other hand, it's Jay should be taking their base fairly soon. 
I would expect to see a worker go down to the natural any time, any second now. Uh, this raider honestly should never get trapped. Uh, it's a little unfortunate that he had to use the flash there. Uh, it's going to go for a second rax. Definitely feeling the pressure, it seems like. It's Jay, on the other hand, it's a little late with this worker. Uh, could have had that down a little bit earlier. Uh, Sadocaster is going to pull a handful of workers just to be extra safe. But yeah, uh, Sadocaster should not lose any units uh, during this. Might lose a worker there. The worker that was constructing the castle. Uh, but that is going to be at the cost of, it looks like, three wolves so far. So in that case, I'd say it's worth it for Sadocaster. And uh, especially with the slightly delayed castle on Isjay's side of the map, I'd say this is uh, in favor of Sadocaster, actually. Almost loses that, but pulls it back. Well done. Um, so I'm curious to see what Sadocaster is going to do with this additional racks. Um, the the additional racks doesn't it gives you a lot of uh, I guess safety, um, and also I guess potentially leads to a bigger mid game early mid game push with a lot of units. Generally, people don't go for this. Um, in my I think like generally the trend is people tend to go for a quicker third, um, but. We'll see how it goes. Uh, this this worker is idle, which is not good. On the other side, it's Jay has been adding two and three, so uh, dens two and three, gonna go up to three dens in total. Uh, yeah, so far so good for Zoutcaster actually, uh, defending very well. Um, you know, the correct choice of keeping the raider back when uh, you went for the one raider expand. And then did lose a worker, but I think that was everything, yeah, and has killed four wolves. So this is looking really good for Sadocaster so far. Um, yeah, so thing, so yeah, Sadocaster in a great position. Um, but I would like to see some sort of value being getting out of the second racks and the additional units that you're able to have. And uh, as I say that, of course, Sadocaster going to push across and that's going to be a good idea. Um, it's going to fall back a little bit because of these walls, but uh, with the additional soldiers being rallied in, this has potential to do a lot of damage, especially because SJ has uh, lost, looks like, what, four, four wolves so far? So the wolf count isn't as high as normal, and additionally, uh, just the one den it doesn't it doesn't produce as much uh, wolves as it really should. SJ is also a supply block, this is really big. He has a ton of money, but uh, is not able to construct any wolves. I think he was going to go for a third base, and yes, there's that third base, but this is a pretty scary push. Uh, it's just is still going to be supply block, so uh, no no production at the moment. It is going to try to uh, jump on this army before it gets too scary. So this is uh, where the the map architecture comes into a little bit of play. Uh, this is a very small area. You're not going to get as uh, surrounds as easily, but as I say that, it's a bit of a surround. However, there's just too many Rax units here, I feel like. This is going to be a fairly good fight for, for Sadocaster. It's just going to take off, uh, pick off a a, a raider for free. And it uh, looks like... Oh, I thought that was a worker trying to go to a, take a third. Uh, but it was not. So this is a pretty scary army. Uh, just just the high DPS of the soldiers and uh, the micro potential of the raiders. This has potential to do a lot of damage. Um, Sadocaster is going to go for a advanced workshop while this is going on. And SJ is going to go for a fortress. Um, these wolves are very low, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the, all these wolves go down. Some good pullback micro out of its shape, but uh, that's not going to do too much when you only have, what, five, five wolves versus five Rax units? Six? Make that five now? So this is a potentially a precarious situation. Uh, that soldier came in from the top side, as well as the additional... Uh, I don't know why that's the case. Uh, Sadakats are going to take a... a, a Watchtower at home? Looks like he's uh, afraid of something. I feel like Zyrocaster doesn't is afraid of something that he doesn't really need to be. Especially because uh, generally when you're the underdog, you kind of expect things to go really poorly. But uh, this game has been going really well, right? So if you look at the, the resources lost, you know, it's looking really good. Um... SJ is, however, holding on and does have this third base up and running. So uh, if he's able to survive without taking too much critical damage, then he should be fine. So generally, you do want to fight with your workers if you are going to be outmatched like this. Uh, good, good attempt for us to surround. Looks like all that is going to be surrounded. Is going to be able to flash out and only catches a single soldier. 
a little bit unfortunate there, but uh, still is able to pick off one and two soldiers. So it looks like this this attack is basically going to be uh, pushed back. I would say overall a pretty good attack for Stratocaster. You know, did a lot of damage. This bird I, I completely missed. I was able to scout that there is a fortress, and therefore uh, advance uh, workshop is coming up. He already got the advance uh, workshop earlier, but uh, Ballista is going to be out in the near future just to be against that uh, Dragon's Lair, which uh, you will get further confirmation at this point. Uh, good handful of wolves going around over here, trying to do a little bit of harassment. Is able to check that there is a third base. Would like to see a uh, focus fire on that work and be able to be able to snipe it instead decides to focus the the, the raider barely is unable to get it that's a little bit of a mistake in my opinion and yeah we're just shaping up to be a bit of a longer game we have the uh, second dragon slayer coming in for xj as well so it's going to be double uh, dragon protection good run by over here um, I would have liked to see, generally you like to uh, put a house over here so you can hold position workers to prevent this sort of thing. Uh, the workers are going to come in, or the wolves, excuse me, are going to come in. Uh, looks like they're going to try to target down this ballista, we'll see if it's able to get it. That uh, raider does fall, nice, and we have a uh, multi-pronged attack over here, some handful of wolves over there doing some damage. This is a bit of a, uh, a good multitasking win from XJ, uh, just showing uh, the better uh, ability to multitask, uh, grabbing a ballista and a, a, a raider, also doing some damage over here. Um, some good move army movement over here out of XJ. It's gonna, looks like, uh, lose all these wolves, but I think that was definitely worth it, especially because of the ballista. Uh, that means there's not going to be anything for the dragons that are going to be able to pop soon. At the same time, it's Jay going to take a fourth base, so things are looking pretty good. Uh, yeah, so Zatacaster, a little bit of a mistake for sure. Uh, didn't react in time for the, the wolf run by, and also lost a handful of workers over here at the third base. So uh, despite losing a whole bunch of uh, wolves, I think uh, it's Jay's wolves did a lot of damage and uh, definitely paid for themselves in this particular, uh, in the last, like, what, minute or so. Uh, the first one was definitely difficult, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so the wolves are gonna run away. I did lose a few of them, uh, just from inattention. Sort of thing happens. There's no s a ballista being constructed again. Because there was the first one, and the, uh, the additional ones weren't not constructed. Loading up some ar uh, workers, I guess that's a mistake, as I see Sadocaster trying to... Let's fix that, it seems like. We have the first dragon coming over here, but there's a there's five archers over here, so uh, the dragon's gonna try to find a different angle. So yeah, I'm I'm really surprised that Sadocaster did not continue building Ballista after he lost his first one. Maybe he he forgot that he lost it. This dragon is gonna push this drop back. So that drop is the soldier drop is not gonna be able to find any value, is gonna be stuck at home. And yeah, so looks like overall map control gone to its J after that uh, well, well, well timed attack. Uh, looks like upgrade is going to be on the menu as well as what is this the fifth base? So its J being super ahead, and uh, this is a bit of a move out out of Sadocaster over here. But I think with all these dragons and the wolves, not going to be able to do too much damage. Good pull out micro out of its J with the dragons. And yeah, things are looking pretty good. So Zatocaster does not have anything going at the moment. Uh, this barracks, that's a mistake. So so Zatocaster, despite his early uh, advantage, did not really uh, capitalize on it. Um, lost the... kind of fell apart after the, the wolf run by by XJ. Um, however, XJ just being a little bit... might be a little bit greedy going for, what, five bases? One, two, three, four, five, I can count, yes. And upgrades and stuff like that. I feel like uh, Sadocaster will have a window of like right now up to like maybe a minute after now. So like maybe about a minute's window to do significant damage while uh, SJ is spreading himself out too thin. As I say that, uh, Sadocaster is going to scout this base over here in the top right. And then once that, once that kind of like time is spent, and, uh, 
if she has time to just build up, it's going to be basically impossible. Um, as I say that, Sadocaster has just going to look to take a fourth base, and I feel like this is not going to be their correct play. Uh, you're basically playing this from behind at that point. Um, you're just not. You're just trying to get into a longer game with against a person who's you. You know, you generally know that is better than you, right? Uh, this ballista is going to ward off these dragons as along with the tower, so. Uh, unable to find any value, but just the threat of these dragons definitely doing the work. Um, you know, just just forcing out uh, towers, forcing out ballistas, and forcing the Rax army just to stay at home. Uh, we have a, a werewolf stand on the way as well for its chain. These dragons coming in over here. Good pullback micro, trying to take out uh, as many workers as possible. It is gonna looks like lose a single dragon, but uh, that's okay. Some good damage. And yeah, like I said, the Sadocaster deciding to just go for a bit of a fourth place and play a longer game. Uh, you know, that'd be great for just uh, training and purposes and in general to get better. But in a map like, in a match like this, I would have preferred to see him do something like uh, put down six racks and just try to go for a kill off of three bases. Something like that, maybe. These dragons trying to pick off a. Uh, you know, a handful of Rax unit as they try to make their way across the map. This this army is not that scary. It does have Ballista to deal with the dragons, but it's just not that big. But where is SJ's army? We have a handful of wolves over here. We have a bit of a run by at the third base. But I guess there isn't anything home right now. So this this small Rax army actually has a bit of potential. Uh, but I feel like there's just, just too many dragons though. Especially with one ballista going home. I don't know why that is. Uh, these wolves over here at the third base of Sadocaster are doing magnificent damage. Um, so this this basically has to do damage. This basically has to kill this J. Uh, but with additional dragons being spawned. Uh, and the first werewolf on its way. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a good hold. Uh, good target fire with the dragons out of its J. Just going to target down that ballista. And continuous good uh, pullback micro. Uh, Sadocaster is able to just you know clean up this uh, wolf wolf uh, wolf army over here, but uh, did lose a handful of workers for his trouble. And we do have werewolves on the way as well. And uh, this is the second werewolf stand, so the potential for two double werewolf production on the way. So it's just definitely in a comfortable position. Even is going to take a sixth base. So. Yeah, SJ is doing very good for himself. Uh, Sadocaster needs to make something happen, but uh, he's just down in every conceivable way. Down in tech, down in upgrades, down in uh, just economy as well. Um, yeah, things are not looking good for Sadocaster over here. As SJ comes in with the dragons, trying to do a little bit more damage at the third base. He's going to pick off a few units. Oh, this tower is not ready in time. Dragons are forced to pull back when they see the Ballista, but uh, the ground army of SJ is going to do very well over here. Did uh, Sadocaster go get the... Yes, he did. Okay. The explosive shot was what I was going to say. Was I gonna say. Uh, SJ is going to snipe that Ballista and you run away with his ground forces, and that uh, opens up the opportunity for these dragons to come right back in. Bit of a mood command over there, but that's okay. But yeah, things are looking really good for SJ. Um, there was definitely a window of opportunity if Sadocaster had chosen to go for it instead of uh, going for a more passive, longer game. But at this point in time, I feel like uh, it's Jay has brought back the early disadvantage and uh, is, is poised for victory. So yeah. What do you want to do when you're it's Jay in this position, when you have like additional bases? You can try to go for further ahead, like uh, he is over here. Um, like gonna go for additional bases and stuff like that, but that is very risky in my opinion. I think the best way is just to get uh, get a like instead of going for like the the economic approach, you go more of like a tech approach, like the the animal testing labs, and I'd say even get more dens, more and just you know don't die right when you're ahead in this sort of game when you feel like you're a better player i feel like you just as long as you close out the potential ways you could lose i think you should you should be fine um yeah so like going for additional bases in my opinion would still work but it would be a little bit more risky so i wouldn't recommend it it's Jay gonna come in with a double werewolf drop gonna drop them ignoring the tower gonna smash as well i assume there we go 
and uh, the rest of Prince Jay's army comes in to do high destroy the tower. Was that the one with the ballista? No, it was this one. Uh, and he is, uh, tries to pick up the ballista, but uh, actually he picks it up and dies. And GG is called well played. So it's Jay gonna win this one. Uh, was a little bit dicey in the early game, especially uh, with some good radar control out of Stratocaster and a you know a fairly interesting two base push that did a lot of damage or two racks push that did you know a lot of damage, but uh, Stratocaster unable to finish off. So yeah, so it, it's Jay gonna win that game and it's gonna put his team up one nothing. Let's go into game two. Alright, game two is going to be played on Thieves' Isle. It's going to be Negat in the top left-hand side. Playing for Team Destroy Call, Team The... F what is it? The Negat Whispering Guitar XX, something like that. Super long name. And in the bottom right, we have Yummy Blah Blah. Playing for... It's Jay's Burbs. Alright, so Yummy Blah Blah has been very cheesy this entire Pro League. Um... Choosing Lily B in the first first series with a what was it, proxy mill play, uh, going for a what was it a werewolves den against AC on the Sylvan Charm, and then also going for a proxy two racks against Nigat on Xenos uh, in week three, I think. Week three, yeah, week three. Um, so. I guess I wouldn't be surprised if Yummy goes for another cheese. I feel like this this uh, this map is a is another very cheesy map, but uh, no worker being sent out just yet, so it might not be the case. Now we have racks on this side. We have a racks on this side. So okay, we're gonna go for a looks like a racks opening on both sides. Probably a raider expand, double raider expand, something like that. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, once again, I want to reiterate some of the finer points of this map. We have the destroyable workshops uh, leading to the natural base of both players. Uh, one thing I like to do when I play on this map is put my houses, my initial two buildings, close to over here. Uh, just so that they uh, kind of provide a secondary wall if people destroy this. And also, uh, they also provide a bit of a... what's it called? A bit of vision, right, to see if these are being, being broken. So that's something that I tend to do. Uh, but neither of these players are have gone for that. Uh, both gonna scout around just to be a little bit safe. So we're having you know a bit of a mirror match. Both players being very, I guess, uh, cognizant of each other, respecting each other. It seems like cool, interesting. I didn't actually expect that. Um, to, for it to be a bit of a mirror match, but here we are. And it looks like uh, we're just going to go into a bit of a standard Raider versus Raider fight. Uh, one Raider expand, and one Raider expand. Yeah, maybe blah, blah, a little bit late because he scouted it a little bit further. And cool, okay, we're just going to chill. Uh, if I if it were me, I would have tried to do the flash thing over here, especially because you've already scouted over here, right? The flash thing, flash down the ledge to so get across the map a little bit faster. Uh, we have uh, a bit of a raider dance over here, okay? And the archers does a follow up, so mirrored build so far. This is fun, just watching the raiders dance. There's a flash by Negat, so Negat gets an advantage. Should attack. There you go. Niat still in the advantage. I would flash ahead, yes, and gets the. Oh, this is really good for Niat. I would just be super aggressive and just go for it. You, you're you're up two hits if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're up two hits, so there's definitely no reason to be uh, afraid. Just go 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 and try to try to try to get it. Uh, does pull back for a split second there? I would still be going here, even even do any any amount of damage. Ah, uh, that's, that's a little bit unfortunate. I guess because you are you only have one raider. Um, it's a little bit scary, but you did see the the archer shot, so you know it's not going to be double raider. Um, so you're free to go a little bit more aggressive. Ooh, that's a mistake flash. Oh, one HP. Oh, that's a little bit unfortunate for Niat over there. Sad indeed. 
<laughs> calculated. You know, I love doing this as well. Uh, when people get mad or like, oh no, and you they you barely win a trade, something like this. Just putting calculated. Uh, they'll they'll feel like uh, it actually was calculated when most of the times it really isn't. And uh, you know, a little bit of the uh, the the mental edge over here. So I mean, blah blah, going getting ahead in that regards. But otherwise, we have exactly the same near build. We're just uh, we're just playing some standard racks. Um, so how what, how I like to play is I actually don't get my second house and go for a quicker third. Uh, but that's not what either of these players are gonna do. So this is the first divergence. We have a workshop on the way for Niat. Workshop on this map, pretty good I think. Um, especially like this. This can also lead to like the the back door, do a big push kind of thing, kind of play. Um, we have a bit of a skirmish over here. I sorry I missed that. This raider looked like uh, it went up and flashed back. Um, so good job, Friami, just saving that. Uh, and looks like uh, Young Baba is gonna rotate to the top side over here and try to find a different angle while taking a third base at the same time. So the difference over here is a quick third for Yummy Blah Blah, and when I say quick, I mean relatively quick compared to his opponent, and a uh, workshop, advanced workshop for, looks like Kata drops on the way for Nigat. So obviously with these archers on the top of this ramp over here, it's gonna be really difficult for Yummy Blah Blah to scout uh, the existence or lack thereof of a third base. Um, does Niat see this? I would assume yes. So with with the house over here, he's going to be able to see this how uh, the health of this workshop being slowly whittled away. I would expect to see uh, Niat pull his units if he like recognizes it. Does he recognize it though? Uh, judging from no reaction, he might not have recognized it yet. Uh, I think that's a bit of a mistake, especially because that is in your vision. Is gonna see it now, looks like. Yeah, okay, is gonna see it now. Maybe that was a bit of a bait. Might have been, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, he's gonna come in with four of these archers. Is gonna see the catapult and probably just leave. Yeah, okay. Might lose a single archer for his troubles. Not quite, and he chooses not to, not to, uh, not to follow. Okay, so we have a bit of a, seems like a wolves then. I think this is a, Perhaps it can just be a transition into uh, Beast. I feel like Yummy Baba definitely prefers playing Beast. More of a comfort pick for sure. Um, however, I'm not sure. It might be just for some something some, like with this fortress. Maybe Yummy Baba still thinks that uh, you need the Wolves Den for the for the Dragon Slayer, which by the way is no longer the case. Uh, you don't. You are not required to have a Wolves Den for a, a Dragon Slayer. Uh, we have Niget just going to wall this off with a forge. So I guess, yes, you wall off the place, but uh, this is a very exposed location for a forge to be, so um, this can be sniped, potentially. Okay, so we have the cannon drop over here. Niget's a little bit supply blocked. No house on the way. He's going to have to wait until this castle finishes. That's a bit of a mistake, for sure. Um, yeah, so additional wolves then. So, okay, so he's just clearing out the back uh, workshops over here, and it looks like that makes sense if he wants to go into uh, more of a beast play in the mid late game of the map. So, however, uh, these these archers are not in position for, for this cata drop. We do have a single watchtower that is halfway, almost halfway being halfway done, but uh, this is also a good place for a house, by the way. Uh, just getting some vision over here. We'll see if this uh, cat drop is able to do a lot of damage. So first two hits, pretty good. Uh, is gonna be able to pull away for now. Is yummy blah blah. And yeah, it's just gonna rotate into the main, I believe. Um, so right now, there's no anti-air other than these archers, and with with an airship, you definitely are not gonna lose. Uh, with good micro, you're definitely not gonna lose it at all. A good pull on the workers over here is still gonna take a couple of shots. Um, yeah. So this there's a there's a huge window of opportunity. Uh, the ballist the advanced workshop is not is done, but no ballista has started just yet. Uh, the first dragon slayer is halfway done, but like not. There's still going to be a long time before there's any uh, sufficient anti-air against this. So there's a there's a big window of opportunity for Niget over here. At the same time, Niget has uh, successfully claimed their third base. 
We'll see if this uh, cat drop does the damage it wants to do. Uh, it's gonna Q fire onto the mirror line. It's gonna take down a single worker. I don't want to drop again. There you go. Uh, unfortunately, it's gonna auto target onto the tower. Um, you, I would stay over here. It looks like they're trying to go for the natural base, but by this time, the the welcome has been stayed overstayed. I feel like the ballista is about to pop. Uh, the dragon, well, not quite there, but. Uh, yeah, I, right now, at this point, didn't do as much damage as you would have liked, I feel like, Nigat. Uh, didn't, wasn't able to capitalize the, on this window opportunity as uh, as he could have. Uh, this Ballista can actually reach. Wow, that's that's very far. Uh, he's going to lose it, unfortunate. Okay, that's a big pickup for Yummy Blah Blah. Uh, only lost a single worker, I believe. Very well done. Uh, but a, a little bit of a poor micro from Nigad. Uh, Nigad is gonna go into what is this? Double mill into a second advanced workshop. That is interesting. Looks like uh, gonna try to get uh, air superiority maybe and just chill. I don't know. Uh, actually, never mind. He's gonna cancel that uh, advanced workshop. Interesting. I guess he did see the uh, additional or the dragon slayer and is gonna try to counter that. But I'm not sure about these mills. Um, no, gyrocraft are good, but I don't know if they're really good against uh, dragons, especially when there are, I don't know. Uh, the, the more dragons you have, uh, the more damage you can do. Get me well, gonna come in over here. Uh, just we'll draw off a handful of wolves over here and try to do a little bit of damage. Good hole position, Micro, over here. A little bit of free damage, and this just uh, leaves. Looks like it's gonna try to head into the main base. Definitely keeping me busy so far. Uh, this watchtower is in a bit of a exposed location. If this was closer to the mineral line, then it would have uh, definitely been a little bit more helpful. Could have used the workers, you know, had a bit of uh, less surface area for these wolves. There's nothing coming. Okay, no, there's stuff coming back to defend. Okay, at the same time, uh, Yummy Blah Blah has taken this base as a fourth base, and it's gonna wall, uh, take down this fortress. So probably gonna go for this as a fifth base over here. Uh, Yummy gonna try to target down this advanced workshop. But I think if uh, if if Nikat starts repairing, he should be good. Yeah, okay. There's the repair, and with the, uh, these archers, on the... yeah, okay. That's not gonna be sniped at all. He's gonna be able to save it. Critically, these wolves also got the scout on the double mills, so Yami Baba definitely knows what's up. And as a response, Ballista being produced, an additional uh, Dragon Slayer as well, so... Yeah, okay, we have a bit of an attack in the middle of the map as well. We have two towers here, but not a lot of army units at the moment. He got, uh, has uh, airshipped. Well, this is going to be interesting. Airshipped uh, three workers over here, probably going to take this base as a quote-unquote hidden base. But it might be scattered really quickly. Um, these wolves are going to come in. Uh, the rest of Mary's Blabba's army is just attacking a house, which is not ideal. Um, but uh, these wolves are going to take down a single watchtower, and it's going to hold position on the mirror line. Well done. Uh, at the same time, it looks like Niad is going to be able to take down a dragon for free. Nice. But yeah, look at this vision out of Yummy Blabba has units uh, pretty much everywhere and is going to be able to see any sort of uh, any sort of attack uh, attempt out of Nia. So Nia is being kind of soft and on three bases, except it's not actually three bases because he has this uh, hidden base. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting situation I feel like. Also, Nia isn't doing much with the gyrocraft that he's been producing. Like, he's, they've, they've just been there, and they haven't really done anything. With the Gyrocraft, you definitely want to take map control, especially uh, against Beast, but uh, with the with the dragons and stuff like that, it, it's definitely hard to do so. I feel like this is either... It could be a conscious decision in saying, hey, I don't want to deal with, uh, deal with, you know, just potentially losing all of them for free, but uh, could just also be a mistake. Uh, that forge is going to be sniped, so... Uh, yeah. While it does block off the, the entryway, which is good, it is in a precarious situation, allowing for these archers to snipe it. Uh, we have, it looks like a, it's going to be a bit of a sandwich over here. 
This is going to be a pretty good fight if you come in from both angles. Um, this is going to come in in one line, which is not ideal, especially against these catapults. He's not coming in with the archers, that's a bit of a mistake for sure. Uh, yeah, well, almost likes this airship, but he's going to have to run away against the Bobusta. This fight could have been way better if uh, these units over here had attacked with it, but they did not, so uh, while it looks like it is going to be a win for Yami Bala, it could have been like a completely overwhelming win, it's not going to be that, it's just going to be a bit of a, a bit of a win, or not even a win, especially with these Jagercraft coming in. Now these archers come back in, but uh, they're a little bit too late, it's going to be able to snipe down a catapult. Uh, yeah, Giga at the same time is floating bottom money, 14. 100 minerals in the bank, 100 gold, excuse me, this is a little thing in the bank, um, which is not ideal, of course, and uh, with the reinforcements over here, it looks like uh, Yami Blanca is going to be able to clean this up, Yami Blanca also floating a fair chunk of change over here as well, would like to see a double upgrades being added in, currently it's going to be plus 3 attack for Beast for Yami, uh, versus uh, looks like plus 1 attack for Mech for the Katarots, we didn't do, uh, they must have... Looks like this was from before, I think, and also a, a plus one armor for just Rax units. For the single barracks units, uh, Niga definitely needs to do something over here, I feel like. There's like not enough being done, like not enough production as well. Floating, both players floating a ton of money over here. Ooh, Niga losing the airship for free essentially while trying to take this fourth base. Looks like Yummy actually uh, is going to take down this side. This hidden base no longer hidden as much. Did Yummy know about that? Is that why? I don't know. I would have to check in the replay later on, but uh, could pick off out of Yummy, blah blah. Or I guess map awareness even. I'm not really sure. Maybe he wanted to go f to try to take this with a, with a, with a worker in the time. So, yeah, so. This fight looks like uh, Niga is barely going to hold on over here, but uh, things are not looking too good. Yumi Blaba is ahead in upgrades, ahead in, uh, ahead in bases. He's going to even add a... where is this mages? Here it is. Mages Guild for the extra tech. It's going to be really powerful with the single racks if, uh, you know, slow fields, stuff like that to allow for surrounds. Fireballs potentially, but probably mostly just for the slow fields to get the surrounds with the wolves. Also, would like to see, you know, uh, uh, what's it called, a snake charmer just for the wolf sprint ability, especially if you already did get the fortress, but uh, that's not gonna happen. You get trying to take this base as well with the uh, huge chunk of change that he still has in the bank, but I don't know. He's a little bit hard pressed defending his uh, fourth, fifth base turned fourth base now at the moment. There's the workers coming in from the mind up uh, main. Would like to see uh, a bit of repair over here. Uh, this center base that Nigel was trying to take is going to be destroyed, not cancelled. Uh, but Yummy Blah Blah is just taking all the other bases at this point, so. Oh, yeah. Things are not looking too good for Nigel at the moment. I would say a um, bit of a mistake out of Nigel, just uh, kind of, uh, macro wise, just not spending his money as well as he could have. Things are looking pretty good for you, Yami Blapa over here. Looks like he's gonna break this position with uh, the Beast Army. Okay, with the workers, repair is good. Fair enough. He's gonna hold on his Nihat, but uh, there's plenty more where that came from for Yami. This gambit that Niat went for, for a, a, a uh, you know, the hidden base, was pretty good, but, like, he didn't do anything with the additional money that he got, I feel like. You know, didn't quite spend his money as well as he wanted to. Losing that early, uh, what's it called? Losing that early, uh, cat drop. Uh, and it did, the cat drop didn't do as much damage as he would have liked as well, so that was a bit unfortunate. Uh, these dragons coming into the natural base of Niat yeah, trying to do a little bit of damage. He's gonna lose a single. Make that two dragons. Make that three dragons. So this is a bit of a good trade for Niat. But uh, yeah, I feel like Gummy Balba at the point he's just he's just okay with throwing away those dragons. Well, not completely for free, but uh, you know, just throwing them away a little bit. Yeah. 
things are looking pretty good. I mean, he's maxed, and he gets only at uh, around 85 supply, so... I guess, if, if Nia is able to leverage his uh, air advantage, then there might be a possibility. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's uh, very likely, honestly. He's gonna lose that Insta as well. Oof, that's a bit of a shame. That's painful, that's a bit of a shame. Definitely wanted to keep that alive, for sure. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. This this uh, forge is gonna be slain for the second time this game. That's definitely an unfortunate placement. It's good to block off the side, but uh, at the cost of using your up forge, losing your upgrade might not be the best idea. It's gonna finish it off right now. And that is a canceled upgrade. And mages are as well for Yummy Blah Blah. Do they have the fireball? Yes, they do. So. Fireball into this mirror line could be absolutely devastating. And there we go. That's a ton of workers. GG is called. Well played. Alright, that brings the score to 2 1. In favor of Itch his burbs. Alright. We're going to head into game three. It's going to be Stevenator versus the fighter on Silent Fjord. I feel like this has potential to be a pretty good game. Um, the fighter definitely playing pretty well. Actually improved quite a bit, especially. Um, had a really good advantage against XJ last week, or week three. Um, and unfortunately was a little bit too loose with uh, his units and kind of threw them away. I was not able to close that out into a victory. Now that I think about it, Itchy has not had the best opening, like early game in, in uh, his recent game. So that's potentially something that uh, you might be able to exploit. But anyways, we have a Steven Native pulling a... So he got a worker really early. Okay, something cheesy. I did not expect Steven here to play something really spicy against the fighter. I feel like, um, I think, like, just playstyle wise, I would have expected Steven here to play very, very safe and just uh, try to, try to you know, try to get a solid early game and go into a longer game against the fighter. But uh, seems like that is not the case. We have, looks like a pro. Oh, what is this, too? Is this going to be scouted instantly? Imagine if that happens. We have a proxy Rax so far out of Stevenator. What is the fighter going to do? Fighter has a... Ooh, okay, uh, a Rax over here. What is this? Is this just a scouting worker? What is what is going on? I'm not sure. We'll keep an eye on that. Um, but yeah, so only eight workers out of Stevenator. This is going to be extremely dedicated. Um, whereas the fighter is going to be a lot more uh, okay and just chilling, it seems like. Uh, this, I guess this is going to be a scout, but no, the worker stops here. Okay, it's going to be a 2 racks. I like this, though. This is going to be a disguise 2 racks. It's going to be like, if, if, if it's early, if it's scouted early, it's going to be, uh, look like just a standard Raider expand, but in this case, it's not. Steven is going for a second Rax. Okay, so it's going to be two Rax versus two Rax. Why is this? Why is it a soldier? This is actually really bad. The soldier is the worst unit to get. Uh, I think this is a mistake straight up. Um, the soldier is the worst unit to get out of a Rax just at the beginning. You definitely want a Raider. Uh, you could go for an Archer if your micro is good and uh, you're confident with that. But a soldier? Is this a, did he like mess up his hotkeys or something? Why is he going for soldiers? This like soldier two rack soldiers to, like wins against maybe maybe beast and that's it essentially. Like otherwise you just straight up lose. You lose to basically everything else. Like I'm not sure why. Especially if it's not like proxied right in front. Oh my goodness. This is just poor preparation out of the fighter. I was I was like um. I was I was singing the praises of the 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 fake one racks kind of thing, but soldiers are just bad. Like, what do you what do you expect to do with soldiers in the early game against a competent player? Like, literally nothing. Uh, you have to go. Oh my goodness, this is this is a disaster. Like my prediction, uh, Steven is gonna win without losing a single unit. Like, there's 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 what what is? This is just a donation of a uh, like. That's a soldier down for free essentially. Uh, these raiders are gonna regenerate. 
even if this was just a single one rax i feel like this is this is gonna be an easy hold for steven eater honestly and yeah with that if it if it's two rax raider versus two rax soldier raiders win every single time unless uh unless some grievous miss micro happens uh there's a soldier in the mineral line of uh steven eater but uh i guess this put has potential in this specific case, because he just has too few workers, Steven Eater has. But at the same time, there's raiders over here. These raiders are going to kill the workers much faster than a single or two soldiers can do. Yeah. Um, even with uh, having less workers, I think Steven Eater has got this, for sure. Yeah, there's just... Yeah, okay. There's just no way. You are. You might not be able to clean this up, but you just you just run with the work, with the units. Oh, you don't want to be losing this. Oh, that's a bit of a mistake, for sure. What you can do is you can just run with the workers, and the, and the soldiers won't be able to catch up. Whereas your your raiders will be able to definitely clear off all the units, all of the workers for sure. Uh, we do want to see a flash over there. Is your HP uh, is able to somehow survive? Um, so as long as Steven Eater has at least a single worker, this is game over. And even if even no, even if all the workers do go down, it's game over because uh, these soldiers aren't going to be able to destroy all the buildings in time. Yeah, these soldiers, uh, yeah, no, this is just a mistake. Like, why would you go for double T-Rex Raider? I mean, T-Rex Soldier, this is just, I don't know. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, that's just uh, poor planning, in my opinion. It does have a single worker over here, so it's potentially not over. It did lose that Raider, unfortunately, Steven Eater. Um, but yeah, uh, the fighter is just completely all in. Uh, this is basically everything that he has. Five soldiers and a single worker. Gonna try to take down this castle, but uh, I don't think that's gonna be possible over here. Like, even if this castle is taken down, maybe somehow you save your worker and kill all the workers, but no, I, no yeah, no, it's not gonna happen with good micro. Steven here doesn't have anything else to, you know, think about at the moment. Just needs to uh, focus on not dying. Like, as long as you have at least a single worker alive, maybe you just right-click a worker somewhere on the map, then uh, you just don't lose the sold, uh, raiders. Uh-oh, you don't want to lose the raiders. They take a lot of damage over there. Uh, there's more damage than you really needed to. Uh, looks like this... Yeah, okay, that's it. There's no way. He's gonna kill that second last raider, or the third last raider with the uh, last soldier, but... Uh, yeah, Steven Eater has defeated the fighter. The fighter has nothing left at the moment. And that's basically it. GG is called. And that is the game. This is a, this is a lesson. Never go for a 2 rex soldier. It's just bad. Uh, it's really unfortunate out uh, of the fighter. Uh, I feel like uh, that could have definitely played very well. Uh, but... At the same time, credit is due where credit is due. Steven Eater uh, was able to micro his way to victory. Like, if you have poor micro, then you could lose this, definitely. But, uh, yeah. All right, GG. And that officially means it's 3 nothing. So, technically, it's Jay's Burbs has won. But uh, we'll still look at the last map anyways. It's going to be Destroy Call versus Consciously Eating. Unravaged. So I guess uh, at this point you can kind of say, hey, this recall might not have done the best decisions in uh, lineups and stuff like that. Uh, Sidocaster versus SJ, you know, SJ was going to be uh, favored for sure. I guess it kind of did, you know, Sidocaster did go for a bit of a better, you know, early game and did come away with a bit of an advantage, but uh, was not able to translate that into a win. Uh, this recall going against Conscious Leading, maybe this recall thought that it was a bit of a mind game against its J, expecting him to switch onto the more standard quote-unquote map of Ravaged. So, we'll see. Anyways, we have, in the top left, it's going to be Consciously Eating. Putting a house in a very weird, this is not a normal position to put your house. Um, this is kind of interesting, intriguing. And in the bottom right, it's going to be Destroy Call. With an early scout. I'd expect this to be a scout. I don't think this will be a proxy anything, in my opinion. I think Destroy Call knows he's the better player, and is probably just going to play pretty safe with that scout across the map. You're going to go for a den. Okay, 
standard place, standard stuff. And since it is destroy call, I would expect to see a second house after that. We have this worker going to a interesting location, it seems like. Okay. What is this worker up to? He's past the point for a proxy. What is he going to do? He has so much money. I'm confused. I'm sure Destroy Call is confused too. If I if I were seeing this, I'd be uh, I'd be freaking out and starting to search everywhere with uh, yeah, like put down the second wolves then just just to be ultra safe. I agree with this for sure. And just scout all the way around. This worker is in the bottom right. What is it gonna do? We'll see. Looks like looks like a castle, hidden base off the off off the bat. Yeah, with the with the three additional workers, it seems like it's gonna be a proxy castle. This is very risky. Like if it's scouted, it's basically game over. Honestly, this is a very weird location to be scouted. But I don't know. That wolf does turn up words, and it's gonna you know scout elsewhere. These workers, very well done, are gonna go all the way around. So they're not going to be scouted by that wolf. Destroy call is, you know, should be scouting all the way around it on this way as well. Maybe even have a, uh, a wolf over here just to be safe. Destroy call definitely alarm bells in his head, but uh, not seeing anything. We do have a Rax on the way at home for consciously eating. These workers have made it across the map. So this is something very wacky, very strange, and I feel like it could work. This is like, you know, the gamble thing saying, hey, there's no way I'm going to win in a standard game. Gotta do something crazy. Gotta do something crazy. Uh, is this going to see it? Yes, it is. Ooh, okay. So at this point, I think it's basically game over. You're essentially playing against a 2 den with, uh, with, your, with, your, with a castle first. And the castle first is all the way over here. So you can only uh, attack with half your workers rather than all of them at once. Yeah, this is really unfortunate. Ah, uh, really unfortunate. Man, that's, that really sucks. Consciously even gonna try to go for a castle, but, uh, or sorry, a tower, but yeah, there's nothing that you can really do against uh, this. GG is called. And that's it. This Rokal able to go get a win against Consciously Eating. So it's gonna be 3-1. All right. So if we go back, Here's the results of the third place match, which means it's Jay's Burbs is going to take third place in our uh, Pro League Season 2. Well done, well done. Good games. Uh, Deathstroke versus Pan Mr. Pancake was not played as uh, they both have been very, um, I guess, flaky with, uh, with their games and stuff like that. So yeah, 